Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how we construct the long run average cost curve. You may be more used to short run cost curves which look like this. In the short run of course, the marginal cost curve is shaped like this. This, in, this tells us that with each extra unit of output produced, at first the extra cost generated by making that unit of output falls but once diminishing returns sets in, the extra cost starts to rise, and it rises very, very sharply, of course, uh, because of diminishing marginal returns. You can't add more and more of a variable factor of production to work with fixed quantities of other factors of production and expect to continually uh, raise output by, by, by bigger and bigger amounts. It just doesn't happen. So each extra unit gets more and more expensive to produce. That generates an average cost curve that looks like this. And perhaps the, the firm is um, also facing, uh, of course, the downward sloping um, demand curve and uh, marginal revenue curve thus. And if it profit maximizes, it will produce here the output level Q because MC equals MR. It will be charging a price of P, there's their average cost, and there's their profit area. Now, in the short run, a firm can add more of the variable factor of production and hope to increase the quantity. After all, if demand increases, this is also, of course, the average revenue curve, if this increases, then um, so will the marginal revenue curve increase, because the marginal revenue curve is twice the steepness of the average revenue curve, and the, the profit-maximizing level of output will start to rise, and the firm will adjust accordingly. But as it tries to increase its output substantially, it starts to experience these sharply rising marginal costs. It's not easy for the firm to continually add to their output level while maintaining the fixed quantity of the fixed factors of production. Um, for instance, if this is a restaurant that becomes very popular, uh, they can take on more workers, they can take on more waiters and more cooks, but if they try to increase the output of a uh, number of meals that they're selling, um, continually in this way, while re remaining in a fixed quantity of space, of land, then they're going to find that very difficult to, to, con to continue to add to the output by only increasing the quantity of the labour input and not the other inputs of capital and land. And so, of course, such a firm has to accept that it needs to get out of this short run and into a long run. Now, this is a purely short run diagram because the marginal cost curve suffering from diminishing returns um, is, is, is short run because diminishing returns is short run. If I want to show what happens now into the long run, I have to change this diagram. So I'm going to rub this out and I'm going to zoom out on the video. So here we go. So I need more room and I'm going to show you now the long run average cost curve. So here we have the same axes, these are costs and revenues, and this is output. And the diagram that I drew a moment ago showing the short run, I'm going to put here, but I'm going to make it very, very small. Here is the marginal cost curve, here is the average cost curve. You see, what I've got here is the the same diagram as before, but the output axis is, has been changed. And the output that we were looking at in that smaller diagram before, I've compressed. And so perhaps the firm was producing somewhere around here at this output level, which was in the first case with the fixed factors of production, the short run that we were looking at a moment ago, maybe that profit maximizing level of output was simply as low as here and they could increase their output on very small levels, but they were hitting these marginal costs rising very sharply until they expanded what had been the fixed factor of production. Once they do that, of course, they're no longer in that short run. They've expanded into the long run, but in fact, if they raise what was the fixed factor of production to a new level, then they are entering a new short run. And until they further increase that fixed factor of production, they remain in a second short run period. And that second short run period might have its new marginal cost to average cost to K. 
curves, and that allows them to avoid the diminishing returns we saw that was happening in the short run and expand their output significantly in the second, this is, if you like, short run period two here. And these are the curves they're facing in that second short run period, having expanded what was the fixed factor of production. But eventually, if they continue to boost their output, eventually they're going to hit marginal, diminishing marginal returns again in this second uh, period, short run period. And eventually they'll have to expand again their fixed factors of production. And they will face th a third set of cost curves, marginal cost, average cost, three, and so on and so on. Continually, the point is that continually they are expanding in steps what was the fixed factor of production. And each time they expand what was the fixed factor of production, they jump into a new short run period. Of course, at any particular time they are in the short run in that while the factors of production remain fixed. But once they expand them all, they move into a new short run, and over the whole history of this firm, that is the long run. But these cost curves are falling, not, uh, sorry, fall, not because of um, now anything to do with diminishing returns, of course. This overall fall in costs as they increase their output here is thanks to economies of scale. Purchasing economies of scale, they're buying their raw materials in, 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 greater, in greater quantities and getting it cheaper per unit. Managerial with specialist managers, managerial economies of scale, financial economies of scale, they get better deals from the banks uh, who prefer to do business with, with bigger firms. Um, marketing economies of scale, technical economies of scale, all of this drive down the average cost as they massively increase their output. So the cost curves they face within a short run all feature the problem of diminishing returns, which forces them to jump to the next short run period. But, but as, we, as we compare those short run periods, those with larger output levels, like this period here, with a bigger output level than the first period, those later ones have lower average costs because of the economies of scale. So this continues to occur and maybe it will level out at very large levels of output because there comes a point when there are no more economies of scale to be, uh, to be achieved. And they're getting their raw materials as cheap as they possibly can and, and so on. Eventually, this might start to rise because of dis economies of scale that can afflict very large businesses large businesses having trouble communicating with the workers through large hierarchies of chains of commands of workers, um, workers feeling demotivated and so on, uh, feeling remote from their, from their bosses and, and, and demotivated, feeling that their effort makes little difference in a very large corporation and so they don't work so um, in such a motivated way and so their productivity falls and average costs start to rise. This then is the long run average cost curve built up from short run cost curves, and I could have continued this, um, showing you again and again, and this, this occurs again and again. Sometimes this is called an envelope diagram. Um, it's, the, it, it, it's of course the long run average cost curve falling because of economies of scale, rising because of diseconomies of scale, and within each short run period, we see diminishing returns occurring. Um, so I hope that helps to explain the, the uh, long run average cost curve. Okay, thanks very much.